Hello and welcome to my research series. And so this is going to be a series of videos where I discuss topics that I'm researching. Um, the way that I'm going to format them is we're going to start with a question. I'm going to answer the question. So I'm going to do research, look up the question, share the answer. Then I'm going to share what I learned. So how did this research broaden my perspective, my point of view, my whatever it is? How did this research, you know, increase my knowledge? And then I'm going to end with what's next. And so that is going to be the next thing that I'm going to research. And so that is how each video is going to connect to the other. It is going to be uh, just a series of videos that all kind of align with a specific topic of research. So let's go ahead and dive into this video, which is answering, asking and answering the question, what is pedagogy? And I did look up how to pronounce pedagogy because I've seen it, I've heard it say, used that way, but I've also seen and heard people say pedagogy. Um, and so I wasn't sure. And so I wanted to make sure I had the correct um, pronunciation because typically I am reading it and not saying it. So let's answer the question, what is pedagogy? And so I did some research and I found what I thought was a really great definition because it was simple, straightforward, and it really encapsulated what I had been reading and it was coming from an educational institution. So the source of this um, definition and really the information that I'm going to be talking about, talking about in this video is from Augusta University, um, their blog. They had a really great article um, titled, What is Pedagogy in Education? Um, which will be linked below. I will link all of my sources that I talk about below um, each video so that, you know, everything can be referenced and have a point of reference, especially if you want to do more reading on your own. And so let's get into what pedagogy is. So pedagogy and education, um, because that is my point of reference, I wanted to learn more about what pedagogy was as it related to teaching and teaching methodologies in education. And so it's the study of teaching methods that educators use to help students meet learning objectives. That is what I have known thus far as the definition of pedagogy in my years being a teacher, being a professor, an instructor, a facilitator. Um, and so that makes sense. Now, the thing that piqued my interest and made me and kind of broadened my perspective was this next part, that pedago pedagogical approaches vary depending on the subject matter, students' education level, and classroom dynamics. But three elements are always present, the educator, the learner, and the subject matter. Now, the reason why that piqued my interest was because it made me realize that pedagogy was not the thing in and of itself. Pedagogy was a larger concept and that there are possibly different types or categories of pedagogy. And I say that because as someone who did not study education in college, I studied um, public relations as a part of journalism, and then I have a master's in business. And so none of those majors would have put me in a situation where we were talking about pedagogy, which is also why I had to look it up because I wasn't talking about it. Um, but as I started to teach more, um, you know, starting at about 2012, when I started to educate and be a facilitator and then moved into higher education teaching in 2015, I would see the term, but when you're in the spaces and you are the one that's delivering the information, especially in business schools, they really care a lot more about your professional and business ac acumen and expertise. And if you can do a decent job of communicating that to students, following a syllabus and managing a classroom. And so because I could do those things, you know, no one was coming up to me with a book on like, here's pedagogy. And so, it was always though talked about as, okay, so what we use as a methodology is pedagogy and let's talk about what that means. And so the definitions weren't being given because everyone was coming kind of coming to the table with an assumption that we were all on the same level, on the, on the same plane, I'll say not level, but the same plane when it related to the knowledge and information they were discussing. And while I didn't know what pedagogy was, I wasn't aware that there was potentially categories. And so this sentence opened my mind to, oh wait, so pedagogy doesn't look the same across the board, which makes sense because I have been teaching um, 
since 2015 at the collegiate level. So I'm teaching college, you know, sophomore, junior, seniors. Um, that pedagogy looks a lot different from the times where I, you know, I've taught sixth graders, the times where I was teaching high school students, the time, you know, like even the times when you're teaching working adults and you're talking to them about a topic, like all of that where pedagogy comes into play, but it's not going to show up in the same way. And so this was interesting. And let's to go to the next slide because this is where I learned more. So we're still with the um, Augusta.edu, the Augusta University blog. Let me move myself down here. Um, and let's talk about what I found are the four types of pedagogy. And so the first type is behaviorist. Now the behaviorist is the traditional lecture style model of classroom learning where you basically the professor stands up and talks to the students and tells them about the information and the way that they're engaged to remember the information is, you know, you might have repetition exercises, there might be mnemonic devices, you, you know, will probably you may test them on the information and this behavioralist pedagogy is the type of pedagogy that I am most familiar with. This is the format that most of my classes were set up in. And I mean, as far as as a student, and this is K through, you know, masters, it was this is how education was structured. And so this is what I thought pedagogy was. But I see here that there are at least three different types. And so I want to leave room for the idea that I pulled this from, like I said, this very clearly written, well, you know, everything was written from a very um, easy to understand perspective for me. Cause some, cause when you type in pedagogy, you're gonna get like, you know, scholarly articles, you're gonna get, you know, abstracts, you're gonna get, these full websites like you're gonna get a lot more where they make the language is a lot more scientific and a lot more um elevated it's just a lot more multisyllabic words and even if you can understand multisyllabic words when you are entering into waters of a topic that you are not intimately familiar with it's better to start with less syllables and then you know work your way up so um, this um, website, the Augusta University's blog was written from a very clear perspective. And so that's where these four types come from. And I'm saying, I'm leaving room for the fact that there may be more types that I may discover as I go deeper down this rabbit hole of pedagogy. So let's go with behavior risk, which we just talked about. That is what I thought pedagogy was. But now let's talk about these other three types because now my idea of pedagogy has broadened. Um, so let's go with the next one, which is constructivist. And that's, these words are, these are mouthfuls for sure. Um, and so in this one, each student can create a learning path rather than following a predetermined path. So when you get into behaviorist, which is, you know, there's a syllabus, there is a clear plan of how you're going to receive the information, how you're going to be assessed, and then where you should be at the end of the learning time. The constructivist is where the students can create their own learning path. And with this one, um, you know, group discussion is common with this approach and because the way that learning happens is through first hand experience and inquiry. And so you have to have space and room for a conversation and discusses when discussion when you're doing constructivist learning. Now the next one, so these next two things started to get a lot more interesting for me. Um, so we have social constructivists, which is a hybrid approach, a hybrid approach um, that you know combines behaviorism and constructivism. So it uses group work to encourage student-led learning, but the teachers guide this work by dividing the student into smaller groups and focusing on discussion using specific prompts. So it's like the teacher is still is there, the teacher, instructor, professor, the leader, the person who's leading, facilitating the classroom is guiding the conversation through, you know, questions, through um, situations, case studies, but you're still leaving that room and space for the students to have discussions and conversations among themselves to kind of understand where they're learning. So I like that. That's interesting. Now let's get to this last one, which is even more interesting to me. Um, this is liberationist 
pedagogy. And so this calls for students to take center stage in a democratic classroom where their contributions are just as valuable as the teachers. And what I also found interesting was that this approach originated from, and I did not look up, um, Paolo Freire, Freire, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, so I'm going to fix it in the next video, but the book, The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. And that is a book that I have heard about um, a bit, not as much, because like I said, my undergraduate was business, it was journalism, it was public relations, my graduate was business. So I wasn't in the humanities, which is where these types of um, literature and this type of reading, I think will come up more often. Um, so I learned about it, but haven't read it yet. Now I'm very intrigued and I'm going to give it a read, but this book is, it talks about, um, Paolo Freire, Freire, I have to look that up because I feel like I'm butchering it, um, but the methods they use to eradicate mass illiteracy in Brazil and ultimately empowered those in poverty. And so I can, I get kind of how this is liberationist because it does not create a setting where the teacher or the facilitator is the most knowledgeable person in the room. It create and they are there to um, impart their wisdom on the students or the learners. It says that everyone comes into the room. And so this is my, um, this is how I am understanding liberationist pedagogy. And it's everyone comes into the room with their lived experiences and that affects their knowledge. And this is not age notwithstanding, because I too believe that, you know, we can all learn from each other. It's not just about how long you've been on this world. Perspective is where we can gain value. But, you know, you bring everyone into the room and everyone is allowed to contribute. And so you have the students with their knowledge, the teacher facilitator with their knowledge, and we're essentially coming together to expand our knowledge. Now, this is interesting um, because I had never heard of liberationist pedagogy and seeing it as listed as, four, as one of the four types, it sparked my curiosity. So one of the things that has happened here is that my idea of pedagogy has expanded. And so now let's get to the next section, which is, what did I learn? So here's what I learned. I learned that pedagogy is often spoken about as a singular approach to education when it isn't. It's actually a bucket with at least four different types. And like I said, I'm leaving room for there being other types that I'm going to encounter as I continue my research. And so let's take that, take here to what's next. So now that I have taken some time to learn more about pedagogy, what do I want to learn next? And what is the next thing that I'm going to look into? I actually want to dig more into pedagogy. So the next video will I can't say that the question will be the same because my question might change, but I want to learn more about one, these different types of pedagogy that I just learned from this, which was the um, behaviorist, you know, constructivist, um, social constructivist and liberationist forms of pedagogy. pedagogy. I wanna find some examples, some real world examples of those different types as case studies to see what they look like in action and are there other types of pedagogy that are out there for consideration so that is the end of my research video project number one um like i said at the beginning please you can feel free to join in you can watch these videos just for informational sake but if you want to join in the conversation share your thoughts your perspectives if you have resources want to make sure that this isn't just about opinion sharing, but that we're also sharing resources, information, books, articles, you know, blogs, anything where we can learn more about this topic, please let's talk about it in the comments below. I look forward to hearing what you have to say about pedagogy.